but you don't really have any recollection. Um, but suddenly you feel like you just got back from someplace. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know if you experienced that. Yeah, sure. Well, absolutely. I, in one regard, I even when you talk, when you describe it, I, I get uh, a feeling or a, a recollection of deja vu it kind of involved in mm -hmm. that as well. You know, that you're in some way uh, recognizing the experience that you're having. And, and it's in some way it, it's resonating very powerfully with, with another experience that that either I might have had or actually someone else that has kind of contributed to the uh, the quantum field or the Akashic record or whatever we want to call it, if you know what I mean. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's just fascinating to me because we are, we're jumping around in time. I mean, and I have had experiences. I mean, this is a few years back when I, f I finally just said, okay, I get it now. I would um, be maybe sitting on the couch and then suddenly I get this flash of myself as if I had been in the bedroom or someplace else. And I mean, but, it, but now it's coming in, you know, vivid to me at the time. Now, it, now you can, I could grab it, hold on to it a little bit longer um, as if it was a memory. So I started scratching my head. I'm like, well, maybe, maybe, did I do that at some point? Mm. Hmm. Mm. I thought I was in the room. I mean, just that kind of bizarre stuff. And then after a while, it wasn't bizarre anymore. I started to realize that I, I'm just all over the place. And it's just my consciousness. And right now, where I am, I'm whatever I'm conscious of at that moment, that's where I am. If I travel back to 1890, I'm just completely conscious that I'm in 1890. Um, so I, I just think it is all fascinating. And I think that science is definitely um, going to really start, you know, bringing this stuff up. You know, they're always coming up with it like after we, the people that aren't technically scientists, um, have sort of figured that out. Yeah, the, but I think the, the mystic, right, is uh, the, the spiritual exactly. person is, is have have a, a knowledge there. Absolutely. And but we're we're all scientists. And I'm always saying that to, to everybody is I recognize that we are all scientists. That that's how we got here in the first place. We're doing amazing things um, with cosmic technology. And we've done such an amazing job that we just don't <laughs> remember. Mm. <laughs> it's do, just so fascinating. Do, do you think that uh, Genetic memory has something to do with this as well. You talked before about this uh, kind of that we've we've been capped, if you will, with a certain set of preferences or, or an experience properties that that is attributed to the human being. But you think that our DNA in some way has been, you know, programmed in this manner, or that our genetic memory is something that affects us, meaning that if our parents lived through something in a certain way, that's going to obviously reflect back on us. Do you think that might be the case also? Um, yes, I think that um, all of all of those things are the genetics, um, ancestral imprints, as I call them, because all of these things are imprints. Now, trauma is always, um, you know, a major one to get imprinted. Anything that's memorable and a shock to us um, or impacts us in any way becomes an imprint. And I do believe that things become genetic. But I also um, know that as souls, I do believe that we determine the connections that we want to make um, in the bodies that we we take on and the, according to what we are going to need for that particular journey here. So even if that is the case, you choose parents that are going to have um, a particular uh, encoding um, that you will that you will need to carry out your plans, no matter how mad we get at our parents, uh, you know that's that's what we do. But it's not that we can't change um, anything, and and that leads to, of course, the whole idea of destiny um, and and fate, um, mm -hmm. which I talk mm -hmm. about in the book. Mm -hmm. I talk about that in the book, and from the standpoint that when we begin to move beyond much of these things we start to move beyond what we call destiny and what we call fate. They no longer exist. They only exist as a, um, as, um, what should I, as guidelines. They have to work together with, uh, with karma, with uh, reincarnation. And if you really start to, re to look at it, um, which I wrote about extensively, you will see that they would have to be tied together. You have to, you have destiny because what? Because 
you have a particular um, operation, a particular process that needs to occur in the timeline that you enter. So that's destiny when you are still there. Destiny then usually means if you're coming in with a particular uh, agenda, karmic things to deal with, then that becomes destiny and fate then is tied into that because fate and destiny would have to work hand, hand in hand. And of course, karma in order to resolve, then all of that gets tied into it. And then the reincarnation wheel, the concept of reincarnation would then be essential in order to allow a soul the opportunity to create this kind of um, resolve or resolve or, or this kind of um, transition. So they work hand in hand. But when we begin to shift away from from um, the concept then again of the ego and feeling and the processing of emotions, um, you know, based on, you know, you did this to me and, and all of those things based on the judgment process and the the protection of the ego, which is where the survival program comes in. We must protect our egos. We must protect ourselves at all costs. When all of that, uh, as you evolve from all of that, there is no need to have restrictions of that manner. There is no need for destiny to guide you. Your fate is your own. What you choose at that point is your own. The soul takes on a completely different meaning then because the, uh, the concept of the soul as we know it at this time is but a um, minuscule, um, a small part of what the soul really is, the expansiveness of it. it the, the small part that we, that we come in this life with is just the part that keeps the record going for your particular um, journey, all of your journey that has to do with this kind of experience. Mm. So as you step up, the soul actually emerges into, it, it actually ascends into consciousness because it's it's going back into exp its, its expansive state, which is then what, what, as I said before about consciousness, Consciousness is really awareness. It's self-awareness. So you're biting off larger and larger pieces of self-awareness, which simply means that you're simply returning to greater aspects of yourself yes. as source. Yes. You're I hope that all makes sense again. <laughs> yes. Well, you're, you're discovering uh, your yourself. You know, that's that's what it's it, it's about, right? And and also, Absolutely. what you might be talking about here is that the more dedicated you are in your own uh, quest uh, for self-discovery. Um, then you might kind of access or or, or uh, gain favor, so to speak. I don't know how to put it, but but uh, mm -hmm. in order to live uh, your life longer, in order to spend more time doing that. Uh, I don't know if that's true across the board, though. It seems that a lot of people actually who have been mystics, who have been uh, uh, very spiritually involved in themselves, or some kind of alchemical work or what have you. Uh, as, as, at least if we look back into history a few hundred years, many of those people actually seem to have um, suffered from a lot of physical ailments in a way. Uh, Absolutely. And I don't know if why, why that is. I don't know if you, even if you have an idea or theory why missing, that might be. Missing pieces. Missing pieces to the puzzle. Missing pieces to the puzzle. One of the biggest things that we I see even with um, mystics, with um, yogis, with some of these um, uh, beings that we've seen is a fracturization, you know, because what happens is they end up biting off or, or, or focusing on one particular angle and that in itself creates a limitation. So this, this, it's such a very trippy game that it really requires an expansiveness and not the, um, a lot of the limitation and fracturization that um, ends up being the way that some of these entities have ended up um, living or experiencing, um, you know, the, the matrix because they also have that programming um, in their DNA, in them. And there's so many things to be understood, so many things to remember to really reactivate that part of ourselves. So 
without that kind of ascension, because let's let's really look at this, um, Heinrich. Let, let, let's really look at this. Um, that it would really make sense that the um, the, the greatest achievement that you as a human being, meaning in you as a spirit in these physical bodies, could ever really make in terms of this game, in terms of the final outcome of this game, only in this particular concept of time, now is what I'm saying, mm. is to do what? Master matter. Mm. That's interesting. That, 